Good afternoon. I am Rabbi David Sandmel, First Section 1972, and on behalf of the Planning Committee, I want to welcome you to this 115th Kennebec reunion. As we begin our time together, I have been invited to offer a few reflections. We have come to this virtual space to recall and to celebrate the many ways Camp Kennebec Junior and Senior affected us, changed us, and contributed to making us who we are today. It is something that years later now, we still cherish and that continues to enrich us. And so we begin this evening by expressing gratitude for the privilege of being part of a very special institution in a very special place and for the extended community it created that has lasted over a century. We are grateful to the founders whose vision and values brought the camp into existence and to all those who followed in their footsteps and shared a commitment to that vision and who helped the camp grow and thrive for decades. We are grateful for all the blessings that Kennebec bestowed upon us, the friendships we made, some of which have become lifelong, the skills we developed, the life lessons we learned, some the hard way, the appreciation for the outdoors and for the natural world, and for that elusive sense of endless possibility that a timeless sunny summer day on Salmon Lake could evoke. For all this, we give thanks. Before we continue with our festivities, we acknowledge that Kennebec now exists mostly in the hearts of those who were touched by the camp and that the number of those who knew camp firsthand is inevitably shrinking. And so before we begin our festivities, we pause to reflect and remember fellow campers, uncles and aunts, staff, and other members of the Kennebec family who have passed away. Among those we remember today are Mickey Langsfeld and Earl Ferguson, who passed away since our last reunion. Both were instrumental in keeping our alumni association going, but for their work and dedication, we would not be here today. They both took special care to make sure that all who joined in our reunions were made to feel part of the Kennebec family. And they exemplified the camp spirit in the way they lived their lives and contributed to the wider community. Each of them is worthy of the title, Mr. Kennebec. As we call to mind those who are no longer with us, please use the chat function to list the names of other members of our Kennebec family you would like to mention. May the memory of all of them be an abiding blessing. I would uh, like to offer my deep appreciation to Rabbi David Sandmel for his gracious welcome and leading us in remembering so many amazing Kennebecers. I'm Mari Garten, proud member of the first section of 1982, holding tonight the bat using the last maroon and gray softball game at the 100th anniversary in 2007, cherishly given to me by Mickey Langsfeld. I too welcome each of you to this wonderful night to celebrate our Camp Kennebec, the camp that beats them all. A little later this evening, we'll play a trivia game. Each of you will either be able to use a link on your computer or a smartphone or other device to join the game. I'll give you more explicit instructions a little later on, but please in the interim, if you're gonna use your cell phone, make sure it's charged, connected to the internet and available in just about 45 minutes. After the formal program for the evening's completed, you'll have the opportunity to join a breakout room of your choice. The rooms are designated by your first section year, or if you're a counselor, you can go into many rooms. I we ask that you select the room of your peers, and when you are finished, you can pop into another room if you'd like. You'll be able to visit with friends and, and for an hour following that time, and it will be a wonderful time as part of this reunion. More instructions will follow. Until that time, I wish to introduce a video made up by our friend, Glenn Goldenberg, entitled The Old Days. Glenn has worked tirelessly for us all to be able to relive our time at Camp Kennebec. So please enjoy this video and I'll be back with you in just a few minutes. <laughs> Rob 
Benjamin, fourth generation Kennebecker. Uh, I attended camp from 1979 to 1985. Indian Summer is a uh, movie. The character's name is Uncle Lou, the main character. He is a carbon copy of Uncle Harry Myers. A former camper says to Uncle Lou, how do you remember everyone's name? And, and that's how oh, I know how you did it. Hi, Johnny. It's nice to see you. The name tag in the back of your shirt. And I'm like, oh, that was just like Uncle Harry. I'm Dan Rosenberg. I went to camp from 1964 to 1968, and I worked at senior camp from 1969 to 1973. On Sunday nights, it was like watching paint dry. <laughs> Uncle Lou read to us out of some obscure book, and I, I don't know what everyone else's experience was, but that was probably the most boring part of the week, was having yeah. Uncle Lou read to us on Sunday night. Hi, Uncle Pete Geiger. I was a camp counselor at Junior from 1970 to 1988. Well, in terms of starting the race, you, you, you know, all your, your canoes are, are going to the one at the end of the lake, which is where Whisperwood was, and then you all turn around and you say, um, pa, uh, the Green or Passy come up and uh, Micmac hold, and uh, you know, um, boats ready, and then. The fu you'd fire the pistol gun and then off off they go um then kurt and harry be at the end of the end of the post with a li imaginary line across the lake i mean who knows who actually won these things hi i'm larry barnett kennebec camper from 1956 through 1961 staff member from 1962 to 1967 and, you know stature limitations is going everything is nobody wore a life jacket Right. right. And, and if some kid acted out, you'd say, OK, jump in the lake. And yeah. I'm saying to myself now, what? Junior camp was really valuable in that you had that division where younger kids could become the older kids in camp and develop the skill at building upon not just your strengths, but also your weaknesses and turned you into more of an all around person. One of the more unusual things that uh, we did was we sort of took the hinges off the doors so that when uncles came back from uh, Waterville with a few too many beers and they came <laughs> hang out and go to bed in their cabin, they would pull on the door and the whole thing would just come off. <laughs> when we went to Tukey's, um, Tukey's was like a jailbreak he made it across the street. Um, we would also give counselors money to bring us back pizza. Uh, and I remember Uncle Bill Harvey Jr. We were like, Uncle Bill, we, we gave you money. What happened? He's like, I drank it all. <laughs> I'm to uh, mention, talk about Junior York at Katahdin, who was another character that would sort of appear on your campsite in this mystical person. And then you'd be read the story of Don Fendler every night to scare the crap out of you so that you stay together on the mountain. And that was just part of the part of the amazing lore that surrounded each and each one of these trips. Let me just mention that one of the great meals of all time is when they gave you a slice of bread and uh, an egg or two and some bacon and you cook it yourself with your little kick. And the bacon fat, and there was nobody there to drain off the bacon fat. You just ate the whole thing together. What a great meal. Allagash, which is a mark of passage. It's really the last big chapter at camp. At the end of the Allagash, there's the St. John's, and then at the end of St. John's is Fort Kent. And one of the first things you see at Fort Kent is a Dairy Queen. And now we haven't had dairy in two, three weeks between Chisokuk and being on the island, and everybody goes and gets the biggest dish or cone of soft whip. And what I remember is just having terrible gastronomic problems. That's the end of my allegash. When we were on the, when we were on the allegash, uh, uh, Nixon resigned, and I recall hearing that from people passing by our campsite in a canoe. Um, that he had resigned, oh, a day or two before. I wasn't, I'm not sure exactly. 
but it's interesting that you know the flow of information um, and the communication then is not what it is today. And I think the same thing couldn't happen. Good evening. This is the 37th time I have spoken to you from this office where so many decisions have been made that shape the history of this nation. The reality of our world on the Allegash had nothing to do with what was going on in the news. It was entirely irrelevant. And, uh, you know, it's, it was, it's just funny to think of it and how that couldn't happen today with cell phones. So. There's the president waving goodbye. Can you hear the applause? I think the thing that, Glenn, that's interesting about uh, Nixon or Vietnam is that I sort of re have vivid rem memories in senior camp of July 4th and how solemn and nationalistic it was. We had three bugles from around different locations in mm. camp blowing taps. And then uh, at the time, Uncle Hart spoke and we had some sort of flag or banner and there was stars on it for people that had lost their life. And I think there was mm. one star for one Kennebecker that lost his life in World War I and maybe 30 or 40 stars for World War II. Mm. And then they had that song that was supposedly written, maybe someone remembers who wrote it from a prison camp called Could I But Speak? And it was pretty solemn. And, and I think maybe that's what generated some memories of uh, war and, uh, and external events because that was so prominent on July 4th. We had uh, Reveille every morning and taps every night and we stood at attention and there was no uh, sardonicness, no sense of uh, this is silly. This was we we believed. I think everybody, you know, did. And and the Fourth of July, a big deal. And Dan, what you described was true. Elvis Presley died today. He was 42. Performing in Augusta the next night, but he died. And he, he was supposed to be at the U.S. Civic Center the very, I think it was the next night or the, the next night after that. So it was actually big news up in Maine when he died because he was supposed to come here and perform. There are many of the same people and you have these great experiences and when it's your turn to be a first sectioner, that's great. And then it's rolled up, the tents are put away and then miraculously the following late June, it's back not in business it's the society this this world that is so real but that was put away these connections last a lifetime and to me that that's what uh has had the most profound impact on my life if there's a spirit as bright as the sun on a hot summer's day and if there's that spirit undoubtedly you'll find it at ck if there's a campfire glowing when we will have gone far away with budding new friendships surrounding it you'll find it at ck I hope you were able to spot yourself in one of those videos if, of all of us, of family and friends, and a special thank you to Glenn again for his work and made in conjunction with the, the reunion. If you want to see more, go to the Kennebec website and you can watch the full length movie that Ken made a few years ago about camp. We've had the benefit of hosting many reunions, and of course, no reunion can't be complete without us singing. So I'm pleased to welcome Uncle Tom Wilson Weinberg, who will lead us in my personal favorite Camp Kennebec song, First Section Men, written by the legendary Ken Ehrlich for the 1962 First Section show. If you don't know Ken, go to his Wikipedia page and read about his career, including producing the Grammys and the Beatles movie, The Night That Changed America. Ken's a five-time Emmy a nominee, and if you are with us, if he's with us tonight, I can, I hope you'll change your Wikipedia page to say you are a proud Kennebecker. The first section, the first verse of the first section men, Tom will sing by himself. But if you wish after that, turn on your audio and join us for the re remaining verses of the song. Don't worry if you can't remember, the words are provided for you. So please join Uncle Tom 
Wilson Weinberg in First Section Men. First Section Men was written by Ken Ehrlich in 1962. We're in school for nine months out of each year, waiting for the three that we like best. No more history, geology, science, or zoology. We can give our weary minds a rest. The time has come when we can stop our working. It's evident we gave our all this year. We will soon be on our way to another summer's play. We deserve every minute. Ain't that clear? To Canada back we travel. To the uncles we will say. Your face may look like we travel. But we love you anyway. Because we're first six men and we can say it. From the early morning till the end of the day. And no one can tell us why chuck you fellas. Because we're on top of any fray. We have waited for long years to get here. We will long remember what we do. From when pioneers we fight to that great first section night, these days will all be something new. To Canada we travel, to the uncles we will say, your face may look like gravel, but we love you anyway, because we're first section men and we can say it, from the early morning till the end of day. And no one can tell us, watch out you fellas, cause we're on top of any fray. This may be our final year at camp now, but you know we'll be sure to make it swell. We're glad you were able to listen to our fable. Now watch us as we raise hands. I will be proudly singing that song when I go to sleep tonight, I'm sure. Uncle Donald Clark is a part of one of Kennebec's greatest families, the son of Uncle Artie Clark. Both as a camper, counselor, and writer, Don has lived and relived so much of the Kennebec spirit. Presently living in Maine, very close to camp and next to Uncle Artie, Don has written for us a beautiful campfire reading. Don, would you please share it with us? You could say something that everyone will soon forget. But what we remember is this. From the reservation and cabins at Junior to the tents in the quad, the hotel camaraderie, and a rustic Chesuncook outpost, we were Kennebec. From the war canoes, life saving rescue, canoe over canoe, wrestling in Watson, banter of an indoor ball game, nicknames like Uncle Smitty, Uncle Ogie, that perfect tennis shot. Conquering Tumbledown, Katahdin, Moose River, Mud Pond Carry, the Allagash Rapids, and the Obstacle Race. We were Kennebec. We knew how to win, but learned to lose. We had friends, but made greater friendships. We had faced challenges, but were given harder ones. We were successful in school, but learned more outside the classroom. We came in unaware, and came out prepared. We went in as young boys and came away as young men. For many of us, above and beyond our parents, education, careers, partners, and family, our founding influence was Kennebec. The best day of the year was when the campers arrived. The worst was the last. I recall when I got back home, my mother asking me about my pioneer year and then wondering if I had been happy to leave camp. Mom, I answered, I'll always be there. I'll never leave Kennebec. Friends, now it's time for the most complicated and fun part of the evening, but I skipped ahead forgetting to thank Uncle Don. I've always loved your writing and your amazing Kennebec spirit. Thank you. We're going to start the Kennebec trivia. Now, in order to play, please pick up your smartphone or just in a moment, there'll be a link in the um, chat room and you're gonna click on it and you're gonna enter the pin code that is right there. So if you're gonna do it on your phone, you wanna go to www.kahoot.it and enter the pin code. Or you can use the link, um, David, if you post it in there, there it is, and connect directly into Kahoot. 
Now we're gonna see if we can get 200 plus people in this game to enjoy and play and compete. And it's really a wonderful opportunity. And the, there'll be 15 questions. There's Rich and DAR. So some people are already getting in real quickly. Probably some teachers among that. Some names that I recognize and so glad you're here. Now, once we start playing, answering quickly a question is to your advantage, even if you don't know the answer. So if you don't answer quickly to one of the choices that's in front of you. At the end of the game, the winner, the color war, camp, uh, color war captain here, the winner of this will be, uh, we will donate $100 to the American Camping Association's Kennebec Fund, which continues to provide support, support for campers to go to camps and get the experience that we all received as part of being a Kennebec camper. So again, either use the, click the link or go use your cell phone and go to www.kahoot.it and enter that pin code. Of course, friends who are on the reunion committee, you're ineligible. So we've gotten already 50 people in. We're gonna take a couple more minutes. Got some pretty fun names that are in there. And let's see if we can get a few more. Once the game starts, we're gonna unmute everybody so that you will be able to have some banter. But if you know the answer to the question, don't say it out loud because everybody else is gonna hear it. So we're up to 60 players. Let's see how many more we can do. And then we will begin the game and see how you are in remembering your Kennebec trivia. So we're gonna take one, about one more minute for people to sign in. If you're not able to do it, you'll have fun at home trying to guess yourself. It's really wonderful to see how many people have joined us today, having not been together in five years and for a camp that hasn't been with us since 1991. I think it's quite remarkable how many people have joined us. So thank you. So either click on the link from the chat or put in, we'll go about another 30 seconds. We have 70 some players. Okay, so David, if you would help us, let's start getting ready to start the game. Now remember, you wanna to try to answer the question as quickly as possible. The first question you'll have 20 seconds to answer and you're gonna use your mouse if you're using your computer or you're gonna use your phone in order to select the color for the correct answer. The first question's the easiest one. Here it comes and it's a true or false question. Three, two, one, true or false. There are salmon in Salmon Lake. You wanna click blue if the answer is true. You wanna click red if the answer is false. 57 answers are already in. And the easiest one of the night, 60 some answers, almost 68 answers. You got five seconds to go. And we're gonna get an immediate tally here to see how many people got the right answer. And the answer is false. 20 people thought they were Salmon and Salmon Lake, but they're not. David, would you tell us who's in the lead? So we'll get a tally right here. And look at that, Spider Low, first section 82. So proud of you, Charlie Kramer, Ted, Kopman, and Ned. A very, very close game. All right, so we're gonna have a couple questions now about junior camp. So for those of you who went to junior camp, this should be an easy one, David. How many seats for campers were in war canoes? Red, 18, blue, 20, yellow, 22, green, 24. 
wow, the answers are piling in. Over half the people have answered. You feel comfortable, you know how many seats there were. I certainly spent a lot of time in war canoes, as did you. 67 answers in one second, and we will see who is now cropping up as the leader. And look at that, 23 of you got the right answer, but a lot of people didn't. So let's see how that changes the scoreboard. And Adam Oski is in the lead now, a big change. Eli, Ricky, Russ, and Larry. Ah, very close game on the top five. So excellent, excellent. Another question now about Kennebec Jr. Let's see who's got a good memory. In the history of Kennebec Jr., how many tribes were there? Ooh, four red, five blue, six yellow, seven green. Okay, nine seconds in. Over 70 of you have put up an answer. That's excellent, 72. Can you remember how many tribes there were accurately? In the history of the camp, the answer is six. 21 of you got right. Some of you forgot about the Walmanox. And no, oh, you got the other ones right. So let's see, does it change? Adam Oski still in the lead. Here, Eli, Ricky coming in at fourth and Bart. And I wonder if that's my dear friend, Ricky. So I have a feeling it is. Okay, so let's go to question number four. And I would suspect that most of you will have a little bit of thinking to do about this one, starting from camp. And if you're walking out to the order of the reses, what's the correct order? Red, Malasite, Micmac, Passamaquoddy, a Penobscot and Norwich Yellow, Passamaquoddy, Penobscot, Malasite, Micmac, Norwich Blue, Micmac, Norwich Walk, Passamaquoddy, Malasite, Penobscot, or green, none or the above. Do you remember the correct order? So we got three, two, one, and will we have the same leader in the game for $100 to be donated to charity? Charity. And look at that. 28 of you got it right. That's really excellent. Some of you have to get refreshed. And let's go to the answers on the scoreboard here. And look at that. Animoski is still in the lead here. Ben Kaufman, 84. Bart and Russ. It's Animoski really leading the way here. Excellent job. Okay. For those of you who went to Kennebec Senior, Here's a question for you. How many pioneer cabins were there that were not including the triple P? Now, while you're thinking about that, David Kendi, are you out there? Uncle Booty is right here. Yes. Look at how handsome you were, sir. Yeah, Red that was five, that's, blue that's, six. That's, that's, that was in the past, boy. Yep, yellow seven, green eight. Uncle Booty, <laughs> you look great. And I took that photo personally on the Allagash. And the answer you. was? 28 of them. Did you know the answer to that one, Uncle Booty? Hold on, David. Uh, did you know the answer to that question? I did. All right. Now, I want to know, because I think we have some other guests here. Did anybody else have wonder about the PPP? Did you count that in your list? I hope not. Fine all right. Uncle fine. Booty, we miss you. So glad you're a wonderful man, and we all think the world of your dad. So glad you could join us tonight. Thank you, Maury. Uh, take care, buddy. All right, now you went on some trips while you were at St. Kennebec Senior. And let's see if you remember the answer to this question. So Dave, oh, we have to get to the scoreboard, I'm sorry. Adam is still way out in the lead. He really remembers his Kennebec trivia. And then Ben, JK87, Tony W, and Ricky in fifth. All right, now let's get this question on a trip. Should be easy for most of us. Do you remember how approximately, how high is Mount Katahdin? Red, one mile. Blue, 1.5 miles. Yellow, two miles. Green, two and a half miles. How high up? Can't really tell from the sign, but many of you remember 65 answers in, going to Baxter State Park and doing that wonderful hike. And David, go ahead. Look at that, 47 of you. That's excellent. So with speed mattered, let's see if this changed the scoreboard. Look at Adam. He continues to lead a lead. Adam, can you hear me? Can you shut your sound off? Yeah, I hear you. What year are you, Adam? 75. 75. Excellent memory, sir. Wonderful. So glad you're doing well. <laughs> okay. Let's pick up the next question here. And one second here. Okay, go ahead, David. It's fine. What was not a portion of the Allagash Strip? Red, Mud Pond Cannery. Blue, Lobster Lake. Yellow, Allagash Falls. Green, Fort Kent, Maine. Which one wasn't? So 56 answers are in. Wow. 65 with time is just about out. And is, can Adam stay in the lead? 
63 of you knew there was no lobster lake, but Don Clark told me that there is a lobster lake in Maine, but that's not the one. Okay. Now, I would imagine that many of you, I'm sorry, Adam's still in the lead with 6,000 points. Ben, close by at 5,400, and three others trying to catch up at 5,481, and Bill at 5,463, and Eli at 4,477. Okay, let's see if Ben can catch up on this next question. Um, all right, David, go ahead if you would. And here's the quiz question. How many different activities were in the Kennebec race, not counting between each one? So is it red, seven, blue, nine, yellow, 11, or green, 13? If you ran that race, maybe you remember, you can think of every aspect of it. A real Kennebec tradition. 64 answers in, almost 70. We got no time left. Nine of you got the right question. Let's see what answer I should say. 37 of you thought it was 13. Let's take a look. That question came up to us from Uncle Bob Stern. All right, Adam's still in the lead. Ben Coffin Pitch jumps up. Ben jumps up. Amusing Dog Zero jumps up as well. Okay. Now we'll go to the next question, and it's about the other race. How many points were there at the obstacle race from Rune and Gray? You have to answer twice. There's two possible answers here, depending upon what year you went to camp. And you have to hit submit. So if you don't hit submit, you're losing time. There's two answers that are accurate over Kennebec's history. Make sure you hit the submit button. 44, 47 answers. Mm. Okay. So just about everybody in. 80 and 100 are the correct answers. And let's see what that did with the scoreboard. Did Adam stay in the lead? He certainly did. Adam studied his Kennebec trivia before coming on. Ted, Tony, Rich, doing really well too, keeping in there, and that's excellent. Okay, so now we're gonna go to question number 10. And here's another historical one coming from our friend, Uncle Don Clark. What was Mrs. Fox's first name? Red, Francis, blue, Ellen, yellow, Alice, green, Hortense. What's the correct answer? Well, a lot of you are very confident in your answers. 64 answers in with five seconds to go. A few more couldn't come in before the end. Which one is it? The answer is green, Hortense. Francis was her daughter. He also with that picture there. Tough question. Let's see if Adam got that right too. He stayed in the same score. We have a tie game now. Oh my goodness. Tony W, same exact point. Tony, are you there? Tony, put your sound on for a second. All right. Well, we'll catch Tony on the next question if he can. I'm here. Tony, what year are you, sir? 71. 71. The 70 skies are on the lead tonight. I'm Jake, a good guesser. You're a good guesser. That helps too. All right. So if you attended, go ahead, David, camp in the 50s through 70s, you're going to remember this vehicle. Where is the Kennebec bus or the Kennebus presently located? Red at two keys, blue at a junkyard, yellow, the stable barn at senior camp, or green, Scal Keegan. Where is the bus? 57, 58 answers in with three seconds left. A lot of guessing, I'm sure. 39 of you knew it's in Scal Hegan. You can go visit it. It's still there. I believe it's at an auto dealership. So I hope you get to see it sometime when you're up in Maine. And let's see what that did to the scoreboard. Well, JK came up to number two, Tony at three, Bill at four, and Ben at five. So we got 1,200 points separating one wrong answer, and that could be a problem for anybody. Okay, let's go to the next question here. Many of you have spent six or seven summers at camp in North Belgrade. Which lake is not a part of the Belgrade Lakes region? Red, McGrath Pond, blue, Great Pond, yellow, Long Lake, green, Belgrade Lakes. The, the, the answers are flying in as always. 60 of you in with five seconds to go. I hope you can get the right answers here. And 69 answers in with the time. The answer is there is no Belgrade Lake. 10 of you got it right. That was a trick question that we wrote for you. Of course, you remember the camp, Camp Belgrade. So how does that do? Well, David Roll jumping up. 
David, good to see you again. Number three there, Adam's still in the lead in JK87, right, and number two. All right, so let's go to the 13th question. And again, you must hit submit on this. This is worth double the points. What does the P stand for in the camper acronym? Spelling counts. You got to spell it right. What does the P, or P stand for? You got to type in your answer. You have more time on this one to get your answer in. So one answer is in, in the camper ac acronym, companionship, accuracy, modesty, blank, enthusiasm, and reference. 24 people have typed their answers in, 10 seconds to go. Again, you got your answers in, three, two, one. Some of you remember there was multiple ways that you could put it in, purity, eight of you got it right. And how does that go on our scoreboard? We have a new leader again, JK87 now at 9,000 plus points, Bobby creeping up at number two. Adam had a little challenge on that question, Russ. And then Harlan Levinson, look at that at number five. Excellent. Holy shit. <laughs> okay. So we're going to talk about this. Go to question number 14, if you would, David. And I would like you to see if you can bring up Jerry so we can hear him too. This is worth double points. Which color captain was Mickey Langsfeld and what year was his first section year? Gray, 1957. Gray, 1958. Blue, I'm sorry, I didn't say the first one. Red, maroon, yellow, 1955. Green, 1957. We miss you, Mick. And 60 of you have answered, and some of you remember. And there's even a hint in the photo. 33 of you got it right with the maroon from 1957. Now, before you continue on, uh, are you there, Jerry? I am. Yeah, I want to tell you to you and Steve Layden and Paul Tobias, I want to thank all of you, along with Mickey, for your years of work on behalf of the Campers Fund at the American Campers Association. You're a real hero for all the work you've done, and I'm so appreciative and so are so many for what you've done to make sure that kids continue to go to camp and with a scholarship from Camp Counterback. So thank you, Jerry. Mickey, thank you. real proud thank too. You. Thank you, Mari. And I'm very, I'm very gratified that you and Kevin Kedig and Andrew Kerwin are going to succeed us in running the fund. For the past 15 years, we've preserved the Kennebec name and enhanced its reputation by providing campership funds to campers. And I hope that our alumni will continue to financially support it. Thank you. And they'll have a way to do that in a few minutes. All right. So, David, we got one more question. Let's get the results on number 14. I'm sorry that we pulled you away from that screen. And... There we go. 33 of you got it right. Let's get the results of that question. And where does it take us to with the leadership board? JK87 up at 10,793. Russ, Bobby, Harlan, and David. All right. So we're down to our last question. And I want to see now who can remember from their days at kind of Suncook the answer to this question. I certainly didn't remember. Go ahead. This is a... Final question, double points. What was the name of the island across from Kennesuncook? Red, Hero Island. Blue, Chesuncook Island. Green, Mount Kineo Island. Green, I'm sorry, yellow, Mount Kineo Island. Green, Frenchboro Island. Picture taken by Uncle Donnie Clark, I think a year or two ago, that he went up to Kennesuncook and took that beautiful photo. So who knows the answer? Hero Island, 14 of you. And let's find out who's going to be the Color War captain, winner, and the person we're going to send a donation to it. The third place, Ben Kaufman, 84. Congratulations, Ben. I remember you. JK87 in number two. And number one, nine out of 15. The winner is Russ. All right, we're going to have to bring Russ on for his voice. Adam finished fourth. It was a great game for you. And Bobby, 5-2. Russ, tell us your last name because we've got to make a donation for you. Sure, it's Russ Cohen, and the ironic thing is I didn't go in the Allagash because I broke my leg in the softball game at the All-Star game two days before we were supposed to leave, so I never got there as part of a Kennebec trip. Well, Russ, wonderful job in remembering things that you didn't even get to experience, and uh, congratulations, and we will be sending 
that contribution in your honor, and I'll be in touch with you after the game to, to work that all out. Sure. So congratulations to everybody who played. Let me thank Uncle Donnie Clark for his help with the questions and the pictures. And congratulations to Russ again and being the Color War champion of Camp Kennebec. Well, Kennebec, David, I'll let you bring the game down. Kennebec has been quite amazing in having so many distinguished alumni. It wasn't until last week that I learned that one of them was, was a senior senator from the state of Connecticut, Senator Richard Blumenthal. We're pleased to have Senator Blumenthal speak to his fellow Kennebec campers and clearly in a nonpartisan manner as he shares with us his Kennebec experience has meant to him. Senator, Bl senator Blumenthal, thank you for joining us. Hi, I'm Richard Blumenthal, uh, fellow Kennebec camper, still a camper in spirit, and grateful to be a part of this reunion. I want to thank everyone involved in it for making it possible. You know how much I loved Kennebec from the fact that I went every year consistently from the first year in junior camp through the first section. In fact, I went back as a counselor. I did the Allagash twice, climbed Katahdin twice and literally found that the Kennebec experience was probably one of the most meaningful of my entire life. There were the friendships formed through summer after summer together and growing together. There were the role models, Uncle Hart, Uncle Pat, Uncle Mickey, Uncle Danny. And those role models have stayed with me in the values that they epitomized. The competition was important, whether it was on the sports field or in color war, but more important than the winner was in fact the values and the idea that sportsmanship, playing hard and well, was as important as what the outcome was. And finally, the experiences that inspired strength have been formative for me in some of the toughest experiences I've had since then. Whether it was basic training in Paris Island during the Marine Corps Reserve, or campaigns for political office, or trials as attorney general or a litigator, all of your experiences like mine have put to great use those values and strengths that we gained at Kennebec. So thank you to all of you for being veterans of this experience and valuing the friendships and the strengths that we gained from this really unique experience. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Senator, for expressing so eloquently what undoubtedly has been true for all of us. I'm Bob Stern. I was a camper from 1948 until 1954, except in 1952, I went out west. And then on the staff from 1955 through 1962, and later became lawyer for the camp. I went down the Allagash five times and worked on five or six, maybe more of her section shows. Those were the best of all times. The 115th anniversary reunion committee has been hard at work for quite a while setting up this reunion. We started work uh, six months ago and have been meeting regularly ever since that time. You might not realize it, but a Zoom reunion turns out to be at least as much work as an in-person reunion. And the, the committee, uh, headed by Mari Barton, consists of Mount Dawson, Glenn Goldenberg, Donald Clark, David Sandell, and myself. Let's all give a big rip raw rex uh, for the committee. We'll end with uh, committee, committee, committee. Are you ready? Together. Rip, rip raw rex. rex. Rip, rip raw, raw, raw rex. Raw rex. Hoorah, 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 hoorah. Committee, committee, committee. We should also thank all those who donated uh, to the association to cover the expenses. Uh, of the reunion. Uh, the list of names is posted 
and uh, you can see them, and we really appreciate it. It made the reunion possible. So let's all give a big grip raw rex for the donors. Again, ending with donors, donors, donors. Are you ready? Rip rip ra rex. Rip rip ra rex. rex. Ooh ra ooh ra. Donors, 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 donors. All right, and now come all ye loyal campers. Listen, listen to what we say. Lift up your hearts and voices, and join in the singing of our beloved camp song. You don't have to stand. Let's all sing together. I'll start us off. Come all ye loyal campers now, as to what I say. Lift up your hearts and voices for the old Bob, thank you. Thank you. Uh, and uh, fellow Kennebeckers, we certainly would have preferred to have been with you in person in North Belgrade this evening, celebrating Camp Kennebec's 115th birthday. For so many reasons, that was not possible. But we hope that you enjoyed this portion of the reunion thus far and found many feelings of nostalgia for a place we love so much. In a moment, you'll be able to pick a chat room and you'll be able to enter and visit with your bunkmates and friends. We ask that someone volunteer in each room to be the MC and that you make sure that everybody in the chat room gets to speak and share their Kennebec thoughts. We're putting into the chat three questions that you might want to answer or you could completely disregard them. We will keep the rooms open for an hour and counselors, again, we ask you that you go to more than one room so that everybody can visit with you. If you so desire, after the reunion, you can visit www.kennebecalumni.org to get the email or address for anyone who registered for the reunion. Tomorrow, you'll receive one more email from us with the website login information so you can easily stay in touch with your friends. And you'll also receive information on how to donate to the Kennebec Fund at the American Campers Association. That's different than the funds that we raised to put on tonight's uh, evening and it's tax deductible. Help us help other children achieve the experiences we received by going to camp. You can also join us on the Kennebec Facebook group as well as stay in touch with your friends. I hope that the Kennebec family will be able to reconvene again in 2027 for the camp's 120th. Please email me, email me if you would like to help us in those efforts. So I close this portion of the program with the 10 most important and powerful words, words ever said to me by Uncle Booty, quoting Uncle Artie Clark while we were on the Allagash. He said, remember, Mari, let's leave the place better than you found it. Let's all do that in our lives. Stay well. I can't think of a more important message. Enjoy the breakout rooms. Good night and good to see you all. Thank you.